Hi, I got myself a Motorola Bravo recently, which is a pretty good, cheap smartphone. But this isn't a review video. This is about testing your new phone for defects during the trial period, which no one else on the internet is talking about. But it's important. You don't want to get stuck with a stinker, especially on a commitment deal. On the other hand, once you find a problem, you won't be able to forget about it. So I only recommend watching this video if you're in or going to be in the trial period. In which case you will want to know how to run these tests. Right, so the first step is the physical inspection. Go over everything, checking for scratches and signs of damage. Check the mini USB cable jack. If it's got a hard keyboard, you check that for loose keys. In this case, that's just the power button and volume rocker. You look inside the battery compartment to make sure it's got the battery and the SD card. You also check how well the screen works. And check it for dead pixels, trap dust. Check the corners and the edges. Basically, the next step is to check all the features. Call yourself or someone. Make sure the screen goes blank when you hold it to the side of your face. Text yourself. Take pictures and video. See how quickly that works. Then upload it somewhere and see how well that works. Test the maps. How quickly it finds your location. And the navigate feature. See how well it works with and without Wi-Fi. Test the recharger cable and the USB cable by hooking it up to your computer. Testing everything. And after that you're going to download the following free apps I recommend. Phone Tester, Traffic Monitor, Antutu Tester, and Antutu Benchmark. Antutu Tester I showed you. And you can check for the multi-touch on that. It's got one, it's got two. Run it all over the entire screen. Make sure the entire touch screen is working right. It's got the battery test, which takes about five hours. But you can see how well the battery works well. Here in this sensors, you can see the accelerometer working well when I move it around. The numbers change the compass. That magnetic field sensor, you want to try to hold up a magnet to that and see the numbers dramatically change. Turn the magnet around. GPS status. I'm not going to show you my GPS. You can aim your ballistic missile to someone else. This one's got a multi-touch as well. Traffic monitor. This will take a few minutes to run the speed test. It tests the download speed, upload speed, and the ping. The ping seems to be how quickly the data goes back and forth. It's a measure of the lay lag. It doesn't matter what the exact results are, just as long as they're good. That's reasonable, because you can run this twice in a row and get different, slightly different numbers. Do you want to benchmark your results? Yeah, sure, why not? And because this is a new phone, it scores pretty well. The green is not far below the maximum scores. It's doing better than the local averages. It's just 3G, though. Well, benchmark is better than speed tests if you're on a limited data plan because you can set your limits, monitor how well you're doing, 
It's also an apps killer. And there's Antutu Benchmark. Start that test. It takes about five minutes to run five long tests. And we'll show some fancy special effects. And then in the end we'll show you how well your, com your phone compares to popular phones. Alright, so it actually did nine tests and gave each one a score and I see that everything is working well and then it adds them up to give an overall score. That's fine. However, when we go into the benchmarks, it shows a comparison of the other phones and unfortunately my cheap $140 phone is at the very bottom. Oh, and this is not the top ten, this is more like a representative sample. All I can say is that my phone works, has no defects, and meets my needs just fine. At any rate, it will show you how well your phone works on the inside and how it compares. Well, I hope that was informative, but you still have to make sure that your phone is working well. For a while, I had the Razer Max, which passed these tests, but then the data connection was off and on. For the mobile web would sometimes get really slow or have no service at all, which of course is unacceptable. So I returned it and paid their $135 restocking fee, even though it was their fault. After that, I decided to leave Verizon and get a prepaid phone because to avoid the contract because I just wanted my freedom. And prepaid phones are becoming a pretty mean competitor nowadays. They're cheaper, tend to be just as good, and more to the point, there's no commitment. They do tend to use older models, but like everything else, you just have to do your homework first. Motorola Bravo is $140 after rebate, and you may pay $35 a month, which is very good for the cost of ownership. So I would recommend it to anyone on a tight budget. If you're not cooking rice and beans over a fire, I might get the Motorola Triumph next time, but definitely prepaid. If you ask me, commitment is for your girlfriend, not your cell phone carrier or gym or any obnoxious company like that. Who do these people think they are? Why do we put up with that? Which is why I advocate everyone go prepaid and make commitment deals history. It's about freedom. After about 12 years with Verizon, I just gave them the boot today, and now I am free of them free of their commitment deals and high prices they do not deserve. I no longer believe that contract phones are actually worth their non-contract price. I think it's artificially high just to attract you into the commitment deal. And I don't buy it anymore. But whatever phone you do get and stay with, there are some must-have apps you should know about. Okay, so... The first one is Lookout Security and Antivirus. This app will protect your phone from viruses and back up your records. And if your phone is lost or stolen, it can GPS it and show you on the map where it is and also make it scream when you go to mylookout.com. The next one is Phone Found Owner Info. This puts your contact information on your lock screen so that if someone finds it, they can see your name, your phone number, your email address, and help them return it to you. Brightness level is just convenient if you're changing the brightness level between day and night often. Battery mix is a good widget. It shows you your battery level as a number, and when you tap on it, you can get a graph of your battery level, and it shows you what apps are using more power. Onavo is good if you're on a limited data plan. It can 
monitor that and give you warnings and show you which apps are using data and how much. Color notes is useful you can, for notes and checkoff list and you can color code them, hence the name. Pandora Internet Radio, that's free and you want that. You can create a station based on a singer or a song and then it just gives you, plays different songs to you. It's sort of an improvement to the regular radio and it's static free. You might want a good encyclopedia to look things up occasionally. And most people really need a dictionary app because from time to time you just want to look up a word right away.